So uh, welcome everybody. It's brilliant to um, to be back like this. Um, given the latest lockdowns, we've decided that uh, we shouldn't even be together in a in a church building or church porch or my garden. So back on Zoom for now. Um, but lovely to be with you all. And I'm sorry there was some confusion about it being Zoom or Facebook. It's just the two of us on Zoom and then um, streaming to Facebook as usual, because that seems to be the most accessible way to do this. If it's on Zoom for everyone, then only the people who've got the Zoom link can come in. So, so we've got a new liturgy for the Epiphany season, which um, I've put a link to. If you haven't got two devices, you probably don't want to be downloading it at the same time as watching this. But if you have got two devices or if you were able to get that from Facebook earlier, um, then you can you can follow that. But otherwise, we'll just read it out. It's fine. You don't. It, there's not a lot of responses and things needed. But we're going to be using that for the next few weeks, um, certainly up, up until Candlemas, possibly until Lent. So um, you can download it at some point during the during the week and then you've got it for the next few weeks. Let's say Louis is going to be doing our reading and reflection for us. Um, but while we're on Zoom, we can have a few more people involved. So if um, if there are people watching who'd like to be involved in um, perhaps giving a reading or um, maybe leading our, our prayers of intercession one week, um, or even if you've got something that you'd like to share with the group or you, you'd love the opportunity to do a reflection one week, then do please get in touch um, rector at stlukeinthecity.org.uk or message me on Facebook. Um, and we can organise that so that we get as many people as in involved as possible. So our gathering prayer. We're going to begin by lighting our candle. If you have a candle at home, then do please light it now. Searching for a glimpse of change, seeking liberation from colonizing forces, the Magi journeyed, crossing foreign lands and borders with only a star as their guide. That same glimmer of hope that guided their way calls to us today. Through night skies and morning dew, through community and in silent meditation, through songs, ancient and new, through art and bodies and creation, through collectives of people who dare to break rules in the direction of a better world. It calls us to come and share our resources equitably, to come and delight in love enfleshed, to come and join in the spirit of deliverance, birthed far from the centres of power. At the birth site of God, the way is revealed. Creator of the heavens who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide and sustain us that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll hand over to Louis for our reading. Our reading today is taken from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. So may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, 
As I said earlier, today we're celebrating the festival of the baptism of Christ, the first Sunday after Epiphany, a turning point in the liturgical year when maybe we think about new beginnings, but also when we begin to look ahead from Christmas towards Lent. It's one of those crucial turning points also in the narrative of salvation. The baptism being a key incident in Jesus's life that's spoken about in all four gospel accounts. A game changing moment of revelation and perhaps self revelation, which flows from and from which flows the well, the kind of outpouring of Jesus's ministry into the world. So you might reasonably wonder why we're not using the suggested lectionary reading from Mark, which relates the baptism of Jesus by John in the Jordan and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and the heavenly voice. While this is partly because both Miranda and Laura, our rector and team vicar, have each spoken about John the Baptist quite extensively uh, during Advent. So it seemed to make sense to shift the scriptural focus for this reflection to one of the other lectionary readings. And so I chose um, Genesis 1, 1 to 5 for this reason, but also actually because I, I wanted to think about the relationship between creation and baptism. Now, the opening of Genesis that we've just read presents us with an expression of the moment of creation from nothing in which God breathes and there is life. And perhaps this is one way of understanding baptism, the moment when we move from darkness into the light of new birth in Christ. Although baptism can also be understood as a moment when we enter darkness when something of us dies and we are raised to new life with Jesus. So perhaps in this sense, we are in some way created anew in baptism, an echo of God's moment of creation. But perhaps we can think about it the other way around and perhaps baptism can also tell us something about creation. Holy baptism is one of the so-called dominical sacraments of the church in that, along with Holy Communion, it's one of the two sacraments that Jesus initiates in scripture. And as a sacrament, baptism can be understood as a way in which God, who created from nothing and who is therefore not part of creation, but radically other, nevertheless, makes God's self known to us in the stuff of creation through the Holy Spirit. God present with us in the waters of baptism, as in the bread and wine of the Eucharist. So perhaps thinking about the relationship between creation and baptism can help us to understand the act of creation itself as sacramental, an uncompelled act of love, which initiates the relationship between creator and created, and through which we are being drawn into ever deeper communion with God, through God's sacramental presence in creation. But this might also lead us to ask questions about the status of creation and baptism as events. Perhaps we can understand the moment of creation as a singularity, the moment before which there was God and nothing, and after which there was God and something. But does that mean that before baptism, we are nothing and after it something it is baptism a singular event after which we are suddenly changed or 
Is it a, a once forever event with ongoing consequences through which we are gradually changed? Or perhaps we can understand baptism as a singular moment which doesn't end and in which we continue to live for the rest of our lives. And perhaps this is also a way of understanding creation. The moment of creation may have come and gone for God, from God's perspective, God who is the beginning and the end, but perhaps we are all still living in that moment when God breathed and there was life and the life was the light of all people. Perhaps in our relationship with God, it is always the beginning. And so the moment of creation and the moment of baptism are in some sense one and the same moment, the perpetual new beginning in which we live and through which we are constantly breathed into new life. And this seems hopeful to me, as it suggests that we are not the fixed values we sometimes think we are, that how we perceive ourselves or how others perceive us or how we think others perceive us is not the end of the story because God our creator perhaps and perhaps only God knows who we truly are in the end and in the beginning so at the beginning of the year and as we consider the beginning of creation and the beginning of Jesus's ministry at his baptism maybe we can reflect that with God we are always beginning there is always renewal as the eternal word of creation is always calling us into being in the present from the past and into the future in the name of the living god amen Thank you very much, Louis. Um, we're going to move into our intercessions in a moment now. And I'd like to um, ask you, if you're able to, to get some water, um, just a, a bowl or, or a glass, a little bit of water, um, as we think about the waters of creation and the waters of our baptism in our prayers of intercession. And just to give you a moment to do that, or some time to reflect on what Louis just said, I'm going to, um, share now the song, God is working his purpose out.
So if you have some water handy, um, then I invite you uh, just to touch it and feel it flow over your fingers. And we thank God, first of all, for the gift of water, so necessary for life. For the waters of creation, for all the ways in which this excuse me, all the ways in which the sea and water sustain life now. And we pray for water security around the world. We pray that there will be peace and not war over the supply of water. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Water symbolises life and new birth, the breaking of waters, ushering in the child's first breath and that drastic change from living in water to living in air. And so we pray too for the breaking in of a new world in our time. We pray for a sustainable recovery from this COVID time. We pray for an end to populism and fascism and a new birth, a new dawn for our world based on equity and respect and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For me as well, water symbolises rest and refreshment and relaxation, whether it's those wonderful times of sitting in a hot tub in a spa on holiday or swimming or having a hot bath or listening to the sea or a stream. So we pray for peace and relaxation in what is such a very anxious time. We pray for the calm of a still lake in morning, reflecting the glory around us. We pray for the joy of a rushing mountain stream, bubbling and gurgling as it moves. We pray for the relaxation of walking along the beach. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Water symbolises the healing and washing of wounds, and we pray for all who are ill, for all who are in any kind of need in body, mind or spirit. We hold before you today all those who are working in healthcare, feeling overwhelmed and overburdened. We pray for all those who are ill with COVID or with other things and afraid to go to hospital. We pray for healing and for a transformation of the situation that we find ourselves in. We pray for the healing of deep wounds uh, in the United States and elsewhere, politically, socially and culturally. We pray for the healing of the wound of racism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And of course, that elemental water reminds us of our own baptism, our own birth as Christians and that symbol of renewal. And I invite you, if you'd like to, I know not everyone um, might want to do this, but if you'd like to, just take some of the water and Place it again on your own forehead. You might want to make the sign of a cross or just put some water there. And in a moment of silence, I invite you to recommit yourselves to those baptismal promises either that you made or that were made on your behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Amen. And so let us come to the table, expectant, eager, open to taste the rich blessings of heaven, both from unexpected places and people and experiences. I'm going to um, prepare our bread and wine and um, I invite you to Get something symbolic to eat or drink at home as our sign of our continued communion while we gather remotely. Lord, accept your people's gifts, not gold, frankincense or myrrh, but hearts and voices raised in praise of Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation. Amen. Louis, can you just mute yourself so it doesn't um, flick between two screens? Thank you. And so we pray our prayer of thanksgiving. God of the universe, we give you thanks for by the leading of a star, you have revealed your only son to the world. And in moments of simple pleasure, in water, in friendship, in nature, you reveal your glory to us daily in creation. In this meal, we remember the life, death and resurrection of the one who still takes on flesh today. On the night he would be arrested, Jesus gathered his friends and companions in the midst of a tense and dangerous time. They found each other at table, connecting over the story of God enfleshed among them. And as they did so, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, and shared it with his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he also took the cup gave thanks to God and shared it with his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of God. Settle on these gifts and on all who gather now, in our different places yet united in worship, that we might be transformed and renewed in our remembrance of your radical love, your eternal embrace and your grace that makes all things new. Amen. We gather our prayers together in the words that Jesus gives us and in our um, liturgy, which you may have in front of you, there's a new version of the Lord's Prayer. I'm not quite sure where this one comes from. Um, I think Laura might have written it. Um, very beautiful. If you don't have that in front of you, you won't be able to follow it. So just use whichever version um, you know best. Um, so we pray together. O breathing life, your name shines everywhere. Release a space to plant your presence here. Imagine your possibilities now. Embody your desire in every light and form. Grow through us, 
this moment's bread and wisdom. Untie the knots of failure binding us as we release the strands we hold of others' faults. Help us not forget our source, yet free us from not being in the present. From you arises every vision, power and song, from gathering to gathering. Amen. May our future actions grow from here. So I invite you to eat and drink together and I'm going to um, play a version of the Gloria which uh, uh, which the choir of St Martin the Fields have recorded for, for use in churches at this time while we do that. Lord God, the bright splendour whom the nations seek. May we, who with the Magi have been drawn to your light, discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So just before we finish our service, a few notices. Uh, now I've written these on post-its so I don't forget them, um, but if, if you have any additional notices then do please feel free to put them in the comments for everyone to see. Um, next week our theme is the week of prayer for Christian unity which will then be um, the week after that and we've, ma we've got um, a guest speaker coming to that so we've, ma we've managed to get um, Father Michael Fitzgerald, Cardinal Michael from St Vincent's. Um, St Vincent's is one of our partner churches in the Michael Food Bank, um, very close to St Michael in the city, and so we're working very closely with them. Michael is also my bridge partner, so <laughs> we have quite a lot of fun together. Um, Michael's a, a, um, a world expert in, uh, in different faiths and, and how different faiths work together, um, so we're delighted to have him coming to speak uh, for us on that week. Next, next time, that's next Sunday. Um, so do, do catch that either live or later. Uh, just to let you know, Laura is now off on holiday for two weeks. I say holiday. Um, 
she's not working. It's more, um, she's moving house. She's moving um, finally into the vicarage. Um, obviously there was a delay in her moving into the vicarage when she was first appointed uh, because it was currently tenanted and the tenant couldn't find somewhere else to move because of the pandemic. Um, but the tenant has now found another place to live and Laura is, and Mikey and uh, the kids are all moving in there. Um, so that's great. So she'll be in, um, in the vicarage for those of you who know that's Guy's old house um, moving in there um, towards the end of this next week and off for a couple of weeks to allow that move to happen so if she's not she shouldn't be replying to your emails or, or text or anything and, and try not to contact her so Louis and I are both um, are both the ones on duty for these next two weeks and that's why you won't be seeing Laura um what else are we going to say? Oh, if you haven't seen Mikey and Nell, who went viral the other day with Nell, <laughs> Mikey filmed get walking through the snow with Nell singing Let It Go, and it's ended up, it's been on the, on ITV website, it's been on Radio Merseyside's website. If you haven't seen it, check it out on, on their Facebook page. It's just very, very cute. Um, if, you, if you'd like to, if, if you're not currently giving regularly to the parish and would like to, I gather it's now considerably easier to give via the parish giving scheme. You used to have to ring them up and get paper forms and everything. I gather that's now available online. So if that's something you've been wanting to do but been put off by how complicated it is, um, if you just Google the parish giving scheme, um, it should be quite straightforward to do now. And the, you'll need the parish codes so that they know which parish to give the money to. Um, and those are in... Um, they're at the bottom of every regular email that we've sent out each month. So you can find those there. Um, of course, if you want to just give, a, uh, give one off, then um, you can do that via the online giving page. And the link to that is pinned at the top of our Facebook page. Uh, I've already said, let us know if you'd like to be involved in um, future services while we're on Zoom. That would be great. It's much easier to get more people involved while we're doing it this way. Um, similarly, if there are particular pieces of music that you'd like to request, um, then again, just be in touch and we can probably sort those out as long as they're within the copyright, um, as long as they're one of the ones that's covered by our copyright license. We've got our PCC meeting tomorrow evening. Again, that will be, that will be online. All those who are on um, PCC should have had the, um, the details of that, but please do pray for, for that as we continue to make our plans and try, obviously trying to trying to manage um, the parish uh, and its finances and so on. Um, the PCC are effectively the, stands for Parochial Church Council. I keep being told off for using church acronyms without explaining them. The Parochial Church Council is effectively the body of charity trustees for the charity that is the parish. Um, so prayers for that would be greatly appreciated. And if there are things that you'd like the PCC to consider, and again, you can send those in at any time and they can be put on an agenda. Um, and also on Monday the 18th, we've got the first in our series of lectures this year. Um, those of you who've been members for, for a while will know that St Brides have often had somewhere between three and six public talks um, on Monday evenings in that kind of tea time slot <coughs> um, on areas of progressive or radical theology or spirituality. Uh, and we're We've had a couple of those on Zoom so far, and we're planning on having much more of a series of that this year. Um, we may well go back to having some in person in the spring, but I think we'll keep um, broadcasting them as well, because it's certainly uh, enabling us to reach a much wider audience. So the first of those is going to be on Monday, the 18th of January. Um, and that is Professor Helen King, um, who's going to be speaking on the church and the clitoris. Helen um, was part of the history group of the Living in Love and Faith process, which was the Church of England once again talking about human sexuality and homosexuality and so on. Um, and she wrote a paper on the way that the church has treated and dealt with the clitoris, which was apparently quite a big issue in the 19th century, um, which was about the only paper that was censored by, by the Living in Love and Faith process. They, apparently couldn't cope with the word clitoris. It only appears twice in the whole document and both times in uh, in relation to surgery. Um, it's, it's quite an interesting story and, and in terms of how the church deals with sexuality, I think much more um, enlightening and, and interesting than simply talking about, about same-sex relationships once again. A very different um, focus on that. So do please be involved in that. 
uh, come along and hear what she has to say. So that's Monday the 18th. That's going to be on, um, on Zoom and there's an Eventbrite booking link, which I don't think I've yet, I'll put it again on the Facebook page to make it easier to find, uh, just so you get the Zoom code for that. That's all the notices from me. Um, so we'll come to our conclusion. May God the Father, who led the Magi by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. May God, who has delivered us from the dominion of darkness, give us a place with the saints in light, in the kingdom of his beloved Son. May the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in your hearts and fill your lives with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the womb of creation, the word of life and the wind of change, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Louis can mute himself, unmute himself now, and then he can appear again and say goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. See you at coffee in um, 10 minutes or so. Thank you very much. Yes, I forgot to say that. Uh, same after church coffee link as usual. Actually, could somebody put that in the comments for me? I forgot to put that in my initial um, thing. That would be great. Uh, yes, after this, We'll close this Zoom meeting down and we will open up the after, co after church coffee Zoom meeting. So those of you who are able to access that can just click on the link uh, in the comments and join us for that if you'd like to continue the conversation. And if not, we'll see you either next Sunday or at one of our morning prayers next week. Bye. Bye.